joining by our next guest is the Premier of the province of Gauteng, Mr. David Makura, speaking to us on issues related to democracy. Premier, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, Ayanda, and happy Freedom Day. To you too. It's 21st year to Namtlanje. And I would like to speak about something um, that is, I don't know if I can term it controversial. Some people saying that although we are saying it's 21 years of freedom, that perhaps the more applicable term would be 21 years of democracy. Because when it comes to economic freedom and uh, several other areas in South Africa, it's not yet Uhuru. Uh, what would you say? Uh, well, I think all of us agree that uh, we're not... We haven't yet realized the full dream of the South Africa that we fought for, but uh, we have made tremendous headways into the social and economic transformation of our country. Uh, yes, with respect to the issues of the economy, a large number of our people are still outside the mainstream of the economy. But I think we have to understand that uh, freedom itself uh, means a lot of things. Uh, yes, you, we, people have to be free from uh, poverty, uh, free from all forms of uh, exploitation. Uh, uh, but, you know, in this country, uh, the overwhelming majority of our people uh, enjoy the freedoms that we didn't enjoy before 1994. Uh, and, and there are various uh, elements of freedom. And in fact, the greater you, you achieve freedom, the more freedom expands. So in, in, in its fullness, the realization of human freedom is something that is a, a moving goalpost. So as we achieve a socioeconomic freedom, as we achieve a, a human rights, a, we continue to expand and in, a, in fact in the progressive sense of the word freedom you will never reach a point that you say that you have reached uh, the limit of freedom. By definition it must continue to expand. The freer human beings are, uh, the, the, the better and more aspirations they have to live in a world that uh, is more fulfilling and liberates the potential of all of humanity. I'm so glad I you touched. I'm glad you touched on that point because you're a champion of um, um, aspects such as township economy revitalization, at making sure that people are economically independent and can stand on their own two feet and are not overly dependent on um, perhaps RDP houses or, or, or something that government does provide. You want people to be able to be secure uh, as individuals. So. Perhaps in 1994, uh, would you think that there was an overemphasis on, on the freedom, on the liberties, uh, on the rights that we have, and not too much on the responsibilities, um, on the limitations of some of those rights? Do you think that we, we, we uh, communicated that message adequately enough uh, when we're seeing people today still um, asking for housing, still requesting um, for, for some sort of stipend or subsidies, etc.? Well, let me first say that uh, as I was talking about freedom, firstly, the basis, the fundamental basis of any freedom has to be democracy. We firstly have to build a truly democratic society. For us to expand human freedoms, it must be on the basis of a democratic society. And, and, and if you take it from there, democracy means meaningful participation of people in achieving their full liberation. Yes, you can say that uh, there is a, p a point in the course of the, the democratization of our country where uh, the shift, the focus shifted too much to government. And I think in any democracy that is dangerous, you need to mobilize society as a whole. You know, we have a beautiful constitution as a country which has, which has got the values that uh, the rest of the world look up to. Uh, we have institutions in our democracy, very strong democratic institutions uh, across the system. But what we need to do at this point, 20, 20, 21 years into our democracy, I think we need to, to rely more on the energies and intuition of our people. Uh, government, and this is something that uh, government is doing, recognizes that, and uh, 
you will hear this message coming across uh, that government is checking up its boots. Those things that only government can unlock and can do, we are doing them now. We have come to that realization. That's why the theme for today uh, has to do with uh, uh, the, the focus on radical economic transformation. But we, we want to make this point clear that without the mobilization of civil society, without the full mobilization of communities, uh, we would not truly achieve all the goals. So when we talk about the township economy, for example, we want to unleash the energies of township entrepreneurs and everywhere this is evident, not only in the townships. We talk also in the countryside about the village economy. There are entrepreneurs locked up in, in the, the spaces that, that have limited infrastructure. Through infrastructure investment, we want to unlock the energies of, uh, uh, of our people. We, 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 can't, we can't continue to create an impression that only government uh, can achieve uh, this dream of a truly free and democratic society because that will undermine the element of democracy. So we have to get every sector of society, the churches. Yesterday I was in church in Soweto uh, and we signed a memorandum of agreement with the religious leaders about tackling poverty, for example. So we, around all poverty, unemployment and inequality, we are going to need transformative partnerships uh, with our people. And radical socio-economic transformation precisely means yeah. that we have to tackle some of the underlying structural problems and those are absolutely key of colonialism. indeed but mr premier do that without working together with the rest of society i think that's the key issue for us it radical is a multi multi-layered issue that does need every collective thank you. <laughs> thank you so much a collective to deal with but thank you so much premier david makura we'll have to leave it there we have unfortunately come to the end of the broadcast it is very short but we